on November 19th, 2021, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were re released worldwide. Developed by Ilka, responsible for such games as, well, these. But anyway, while Game Freak was off making a big open world adventure, they passed the torch off to these guys to try to make a great remake to the favorite Generation 4 games, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, but particularly Diamond and Pearl. And I got Brilliant Diamond for Christmas, played it, and, well, they weren't wrong. It was a great game, fairly faithful to the originals. Great visuals, awesomely remastered OST. Except now the thing is, what went wrong? Seriously, looking all over YouTube, I find a lot of negative videos or what seems like the end of the world for the franchise. So why is exactly are fans so divided over the remakes? I mean, weren't they hoping for eventual remakes of these sooner or later? Well, let me say after having completed the main game, there are probably a couple disappointing aspects. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with remaking a game. I think Fire Red and Leaf Green are better than the originals by a long shot. Nothing ever comes this close. Game Freak did a great job updating the music to better 32-bit sound font. And look at the visuals in Heart Gold and Soul Silver compared to Gold, Silver, and Crystal. But I think the main problem is they could have added a lot more interesting elements. Because while I, I don't mind the chibi artwork that much, nor the fact you can now venture off into Sino in full 3D, they could have maybe incorporated some more elements from Platinum or maybe added something a lot more interesting, like like maybe transform Veil Stone into a mall. Mall Veil, anyone? Or maybe add another rival to rival Lucas? Or maybe add a subplot or multiple subplots with the gym leaders? Maybe chip up and his vulner relationship? Maybe add more glitches like the one I experienced at Sunny Shore? Maybe add more backstory to Cynthia? I think that's what this was totally lacking. I mean, at least Fire Red and Leaf Green, at least those games added some additional islands to explore, even if I think the Sevy Islands are heavily boring and pointless. And at least new scenes in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and they brought back some of the best battle music for that game, and at least they actually introduced the Safari Zone for once in Johto. I mean, I think that's the major downside, is it is a little too faithful. Again, there isn't anything wrong with being faithful to something. Just try to add something more interesting, rather than pretty much add the same staff role as in the original. But they, they tried at least. They tried. Other than that, the game is overall very good from what I've observed. The games do stay true to the original games, somewhat to a fault. Even though they do include elements from Platinum, like Rotom's Appliance Forms, or Giratina's Origin Form, and you will be able to rematch the Elite Four with higher levels. But for the most part, it's like you're playing Diamond and Pearl again, but with more enhanced 3D visuals. Which is good. I think Xeno looks a lot more vivid and visually appealing in these remakes. The trainer battles are stunning. And you can revisit the gyms in full 3D. You can battle the fairly, fairly challenging Elite Four again. Yeah, that's right, Bertha. I'm still looking at you. And still probably face competition with Cynthia. A whole lot. But overall, most of the game looks the same as the OGs. You have the same number of Pokemon that were available up to that point. And the layout looked the same. It's actually, as a matter of fact, it mostly is the same. The plot pretty much remains the same, too. But I don't think it's... I don't think it's a bad thing to revisit something that you probably haven't played in 12, 12 years. I... I love the visuals then, I love the visuals now. So, you know, it looks like it hasn't changed much since we last played it generations ago. Maybe if you religiously played these games and never played everything after, like like Black and White or X and Y or Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Sword and Shield, then there are some understandable things to criticize. But really, I enjoyed this game, warts and all. I think, I think a year later it is still worth your time. 
The visuals are great. Even if the overworld's more chibi looking. The music is probably the best improvement over over the original. Using a switch sound font now with more instruments and better timbre. Many mechanics carry over from Sword and Shield, in that you can use EXP all this time. Though I do admit, it does break the game a little, and it's kind of a shame that you can't really switch it off if you if you ever need to. But it's it's okay, and you can use the portable box link to switch your Pokemon out as in Sword and Shield. You can now autosave without worrying about a power outage. You can now customize your trainer in Veilstone, just for the hell of it. An affection is now available. Fairy types are now used, and much, much, much more. I do like how you no longer have to teach a Pokemon in HM in order to use it. And I personally, I personally hate HM slaves because I shouldn't have to go to the center every time I have to use Rock Climb or Strength. And I did like how they updated the underground, now called the the Grand Underground, and how it looks a lot more interesting. And you can still hunt for fossils and catch Pokemon that you couldn't find above ground. So I like that. I like that added touch. Overall, I thought the games are good. I thought the games were were still they were still decent. I do understand some of the disappointment in that they should have added a lot more Platinum-related content, though. Allow you the opportunity to catch Arceus, which would be possible if Elka were to add DLC content, which I hope they do, I hope they do in the near future. Because there could be some missing elements that could have been filled in. There was a lot more to be desired. Could have had a larger Sunny Shore, we could have had, again, Veilstone look a lot more like a mall, rather than just add a dressing shop this time, just rather than add a boutique. But the question comes to, is the game worth 50 bucks? And the answer to that, in my opinion, is yes. Visually and musically, the game is terrific, and I think it is worth your money. You could criticize the art style all you want, understandably, but the graphics are still stunning regardless. I like the fact I can relive going through Sino again, but at a more different plane, using more updated Gen 8 mechanics, with better graphics. And although some areas are a bit cumbersome and kind of bugged and glitchy, the games are still fun, faithful remakes for all fans to enjoy. Is the game good? Yes. Is the game great? Well, that's up to you. It's certainly the least favorite of the four remakes, in my opinion, which it could have lived up to the other three. But warts and all, they're fun and relivable. On a scale of one to ten, I would rate this. I would rate. I would rate both of these games eight. Again, maybe not living up to the last three remakes that I have. I have played over the years, but I thought the games were enjoyable, and I think they are worth your time a year later. Hey guys. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys stay tuned to my other content. I do gaming content as well. And if you guys like this video, please leave a like or comment. And subscribe, sub, 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 subscribe for more material. I really do appreciate it, guys. I'll talk to you later.